Hi everybody! Hope you're enjoying this year's virtual Copper River Delta Shorebird Festival. Today is May 9th, which means it's World Migratory Bird Day. To celebrate, I'm drawing one of the most common migratory shorebirds that visits Cordova in the spring, the Western Sandpiper. Want to draw along with me? Here's what you'll need. A marker, a pencil, and something to color with. So today I'm using this reference photo that I took at Hartney Bay a few days ago. And we'll go ahead and get started here. So I start here with uh, some guidelines with the pencil. Um, so you have a small oval shape for the head and then a much bigger oval shape for the body. These birds are pretty plump, so don't be shy. And you'll notice here that I'm using very light pencil strokes. And once I've got those guidelines in for the body and the head, I'm going to go ahead and shape them up a little bit and then I'm going to add a straight line here for the beak just get an idea of how long that's going to be and then I've got a triangle on the back here for the pointed feathers that come off the end the tail feathers there then I'm going to go in with the marker and start drawing the actual shape We'll start with the eye here, which is like a circle with pointed ends. I'm going to color that in except for a, a little highlight at the top there. And then I'll go in and start the beak. So start with a sort of S shape right where the beak meets the head. And then the top line of the beak out and the bottom line and then right at the curve of that S shape there you draw your midline for the break in the beak and then I'm going to start on the head shape here so their heads aren't perfectly round, they've got a forehead, and then their head comes up to almost sort of a point, and then it's a bit blockish in the back here. I'll go in and their little neck here, it's a bit of a curve there, and then on their neckline. I'm just drawing some squiggle W shapes here to kind of delineate the feather difference that goes on right there. And then I'll draw out the slope of the back through the tail there. These birds have a clear delineation where they're uh, flight feathers and their body kind of separate. That's why I draw like two check mark shapes at the back there. Then we go around with this plump belly here, this peep. These birds can double their weight in the few days that they spend in Cordova. Now I'm going to go in here and kind of mark the delineation between the contour feathers or the body feathers of the bird and the flight feathers. Just doing some jagged lines along that um, to show that where those white feathers come over top of those back brown flight feathers. And this is a simplification, so we're just going to draw some little... Um, half moon shapes here, kind of like shingles on a roof, to um, signify our flight feathers on our bird here. They don't have to be perfect. And then we've got our tail and back feathers here, but they're a little bit straighter, so we're drawing lines for those. 
And then we'll get started on the legs here. At the top of their legs, they have a little bit of a feather base um, of white over their black legs, so I've drawn that. And they have quite knobby knees that I'll draw in here. And then their feet, bird's feet. And um, they do have webbed feet, but the webbing doesn't go all the way down um, their toes there. And we'll draw the back leg coming up. This bird was mid-walk, so it's pretty nice. You can see both the toe shapes, feet shapes. So that's the basic shape of our bird there. Now I'm going to go in and add some simplified details, so our curves around our eyes, just following the shape of that eye, and some jagged lines at the top to kind of show those dark lines that they have on their head. And then each of these flight feathers they're kind of a rust color, but they've got this black smudge in the middle. So I'm just scratching that in now. And then those W shapes again for these white markings along the rest of their body here. So these markings are, are more clustered on the breast and then they kind of peter out uh, towards the tail there. I'm just lengthening the toes on this foot here, they weren't quite long enough. And then I'm just drawing in some of the mud from the mud flat here, um, just to give a sense of you know, where this bird was, um, where they're walking to. Just kind of doing a contour line here. You don't have to make it anything super specific. Adding a few more of those darker face markings in here. With a drawing like this, you have to be careful not to add too many or it, it gets clustered. Now I'm starting in on the color here. So these birds, uh, they're really easy to distinguish because they've got this bright brown, rusty color um, around their eye and on their head, um, at least during this time of year. And then they've got that color uh, along their flight feathers as well, around those black patches. Got a little bit of that color up at the top there, and along their breast, but not as much. And then a little bit along those back feathers. And those, those terminal feathers there have a lot more darkness to them, they're pretty black. I'm just putting that in there. And then their beaks are a dark gray, almost black color. And then so are their feet, which we'll get to in a second. And there's a little bit of darkness around their eyes, a little shading, um, and along the front of their breast. And that mud there is a nice, rich 
gray brown color not quite as rusty as the brown that you see on these birds and then I've used watercolor pencils here which means you can add uh, water from a paintbrush or from like a water brush which I'm using here um, and they work like watercolors once you add that water um, so they become a little more vibrant and they spread a little bit easier um, but you can do this with regular colored pencils, with markers, with crayons, um, whatever you have on hand. Alright, now that I've finished my drawing here, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of this bird. So they have long thin legs and long toes which help them balance um, on the mud and sand and helps them walk through that soft mud and shallow water. They also have an upright stance so they're easy to identify because they stand up pretty tall when they're uh, standing still. They have long beaks as well, which help them find food in the mud, which is probably what you've seen them doing out at Harton Bay. They also have a mottled plumage, which means it kind of alternates between dark and light, which helps them hide really well in those tall grasses um, when they're feeding. They also have pointed wings. Um, those long primary feathers help for fast flight um, when you see them in those big flocks. Alright, so this has been a western sandpiper drawing. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the festival here and you get outside a little bit. Thanks everybody. Bye!